What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the NIU Dynasty. Man, it's been a while, but I'm happy that I'm able to restart this. I've been missing this because I had a blast, even those two episodes that I was able to do. Um, for those of you who don't know why it went away, the color accessories were, were fixed, right? And it turned the colors that I had on there to match the original before the fix. And like the, the black was like super black and the red was like brown. It, it just looked horrible. And some of you guys might be like, that's eh, not that big of a deal. To me, it was a huge deal. I couldn't stand it. The crowd was brown. Like the, everybody was wearing like this darkish maroonish, like brown color instead of like the red that they're supposed to wear. I just, I couldn't stand it. And I tried to update it, but the refreshing didn't work like it's supposed to. Um, funny, cause it, it worked to refresh to, to change it back, but it didn't refresh to, you know, fix it, but whatever. So what I ended up doing was starting starting over. And that's what we are gonna do here today. We are back in preseason. All of you guys who voted, you all wanted to be able to see me go through the whole process of the week four, or the four weeks of recruiting before we get to week four's game against Buffalo. So I said, let's do it. And here we are. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here and spend our five coach points. We do need to focus on the D-line because we're going to lose a lot of players there. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to spend our first five there on advanced look for defensive line. There we go. And here we are in the prospect list. So we're going to go through. We're going to look at all the different positions. We're going to decide who we want to target. And then we will go back and start off going doing some offers to people, doing a little bit of scouting on them, and then go through the motions until we have our... We're back to week four. Ethan Hampton is the starter. We saw what he could do in week one. We saw him sort of fall off in week two, but that was a tough matchup against Notre Dame. So I'm not too shocked that, you know, we got demolished there. Behind him is Kenny Luth. Um, I'm not sure what his plan is. Jalen Macon, we saw him play a little bit. He, he had some flashes, right? He came in, immediately started bombing it downfield, hit Andrew McElroy. We just don't know if if he's gonna be good enough to take over for Hampton altogether. Right now, he's at a risk of transfer. That's the big issue with him is he wants to play, which you can't blame him for wanting to play. He's a junior. He wants to make sure that he gets all everything out of his college journey, just like anybody else. And then behind him, we have Jeff Gibson. So we have, we are, we're gonna have at least one of these juniors here next year, at least one. And then we'll have Jeff Gibson probably as well. So we really don't need a quarterback, but we are probably going to at least try to go for one of them just because we don't know what we're going to get yet with Hampton. We, he might end up falling flat on his face and then Luth might suck and Macon might suck. So we, we don't know yet, right? It's very early on in the dynasty, so we got to make sure we're covering our bases. We don't want to be left out without a quarterback next season because Hampton isn't what we thought he was going to be. So because of that, I think we are going to definitely target at least one guy. The top guy here, Braden Calloway for us. He is a three-star recruit. We are third right now on the list. So we are going to have to battle it out a little bit to make sure we get to that. Um, well, we're going to hit top eight. I don't even see how we wouldn't hit top eight. So I'm not too concerned with that at all. We're going to add him to our target list. And then we do have an athlete here in Clayton Garfield, another three-star. We are number six right now, so we're on the outside looking in. But he's going to top eight, not to top five. So we are still in the running there. We know Ontario Brown is a beast. And Gavin Williams has been pretty decent in his reserve role for us, but both of them are gonna be gone after this season. And behind him, we have Justin Lynch, who is a junior himself. And then we have two freshmen who are a 60 and a 50. So I, I just don't have a lot of, of, I don't have a lot of expectations for them. Jalen Poe does have a physical with safety valve, so maybe he can you know come into to his own here after the season and get better in the off season. We don't know yet, so we're gonna have to target running backs for sure. And we do have some available. Romeo Raymer here on the top, 5'9", 229. He's a power back. We are in the lead for him. We're gonna definitely add him to the board. We also have Emmanuel Williams, another power back who we're in the lead for. So we're gonna go ahead and add him. And then we have Mike Hull, who is an elusive back, which is something we definitely are going to need. And we are in the lead for him as well. And there's one more guy that we are in the lead for, Mike Hurt. Mike Hurt. That's a that's a cool name. Um, so the only difference really between him and Hull is that we're going to have a better pipeline with Hurt. And he's a four star. So I think we're going to go ahead and we're going to add Hurt to the board. And um, I'll probably add Hull as well just to be on the safe side. 
Uh, we will need a fullback. Ours is going to be gone, I believe. So we do have a few that we can actually look at. We're in the lead for David Stoke. Uh, Percy Blizzard. We are in sixth right now. Same with Tyrese Willie and Garrison Jamie. James? That's a weird way to spell it. I'm not sure if I really want to waste the scouting going after a three-star fullback, considering they will not be used that often. And this one is already... He's got a lot of influence from other schools already. Um, I'm thinking we just go with Stoke since we're already in the lead and just ride him out. Plus, we have the pipeline on the three there, so we're going to stick with him. Like I said, we probably won't be using the fullback all too often, so I don't want to stick too much resources into that. And now for the receivers. This is an interesting position because I feel like we have some really good playmakers. We know Kenji Lewis. I feel like Andrew McElroy is a better receiver than Kenji Lewis. And McElroy came over this offseason with the transfer portal along with Jalen Macon, which is why I think you guys saw them link up immediately when Macon got in the game last episode. Um, but Kyle Thomas has also showed some serious potential for us. Plus, he's got the one physical and he's a freshman. He'll redshirt freshman, but we have plenty of time with him. But outside of that, we know McElroy is going to be gone, right? He's a senior. Kenji Lewis... If he stays, I don't think he's going to be somebody that's going to be risk of getting drafted or anything like that. And he's going to be the starter all season, so I don't see him being a risk of transfer. Who knows? We'll see. But we just don't know what we're going to get with these guys. I have a really good feeling that Kyle Thomas is going to be a stud for us in the future. And Jalen Johnson, we haven't seen a lot out of yet, but he's right there. Sophomore, 6'3", so a little bit bigger build. I'm excited to see what he we have in him too, but... I am sort of betting on the fact that McElroy is going to be gone and potentially Kenji Lewis is either just not going to live up to the hype or he's going to leave as well because he's in his third year too. So I do want to bring in a receiver too. Plus, the, the overalls we have are just not very good. That I, that's, that's another big reason, if not the biggest reason. You guys won't know me if you've watched my franchise. I can't not have receivers. I love receivers. So we're going to probably bring in a receiver or two if we can to try and add some competition to the room and also fill in some positions for when McElroy leaves because right now he's definitely our best player. So we have George Salter, 6'1", 180. We are in third place right now. Um, we're going to add him to the board. We have Willie Strange, 6'4", 188. Don't have to say nothing else. I'm already adding you, buddy. 6'4", all day. Um, Randy Mikliad. I don't know if I really want to. We're fifth right now, and all these other schools he has a ton of interest in already. Um, Alexander Carmona. We might come back to this later on once we get more areas of need. Because, yes, I understand that, you know, we need competition at receiver, but I also am under, under the assumption that we have a lot more holes on this roster that we have to focus on. So we'll come back to this. Um, tight end. This one is another one that is pretty important i think so we have grayson barnes who is a senior so we are going to lose him we then have jake applegate who will be here hopefully after this season to be our our presumptive starter at tight end behind him we do have chris carter but he's a senior we have tristan tuas who's also a senior and then way down here we have isaac hatfield who is a junior so Outside of Applegate, we really don't have much of a future at tight end. So we need to hit home on a tight end or two for sure. And looking at this list right away, we don't have any of them that have us in the top three. Um, Archer Kuhn has us in the top five along with Ezekiel Rashid. Um, both of them are all enough to be on my board. <laughs> uh, I don't like short tight ends like Quentin St. John here. He's 6'1". Sorry, dude. I know you're a three star, but I just you're you're a fullback in my eyes. So and then coming over to the offensive line, we do have a good left tackle in Drew Hoth who will be here for the next couple of seasons. We have Evan Malco Malcor, who is a sophomore. So I think we do have answers at right tackle and left tackle. Plus Abathar Curry. I think it's Ab Abathar. Abiathar. I, I somebody in my comments mentioned that they were like childhood friends or went to school with him. Can you let me know how to say his first name properly? Is it Abiathar or is it Abathar? Like sort of skip over the eye. You know, I, I don't like saying names wrong. So I, I know I'm not the best at it, but I think we do have a future here with Curry and alongside Malcor. 
we can build them up in the off season. Both of them are sophomores, so that we have them for a little bit of time. We're gonna lose out on Evan Buss after this season with him being a senior. Um, and then of course, we don't know the situation with Hoth. Is he gonna stay? Hopefully he does. Um, and then in the inside, we have JJ Lip, who is a senior as well. We do have Luke Pinnock behind him, who could be something, but he's also a junior already. So not gonna have him for very long. We have Logan Schernitz in the middle, but he is also a senior. <laughs> Thomas Pash is behind him, who is actually has some physicals and is a freshman. There might be something there. There might be something there, guys. We might not have to worry about center. And then we have another senior in John Champ here at right guard. So we do have a freshman right guard, but I, I just feel like we're going to have to bring at least competition in at right guard and maybe one or two tackles moving forward because we don't know what Malcor or Curry is going to turn out to be. Hopefully that they end up being good enough for us to be uh, to have them as starters, but we just don't know what the future holds. Uh, but we do have some good depth here. Michael Jamar, he's got strong grip, so he actually has a physical, which is good to see on a freshman. He's 65 overall. And then Jacob Welch is another freshman at 62. Um, over here, we don't have anybody who's younger than a junior. So left guard is going to need to be addressed ASAP. Um, I think we might be okay at center and then maybe another guard. So I would say like two, three guards and a tackle. And then looking at the board that we have, we do have a couple of guys who have us in the top two. Uh, Bryce Colley, who is a three star. Um, we're gonna definitely add him to the board. And then we also have Alfonso Schott. Shotty? Shotty? We're gonna add him to the board as well. Maybe we just go for Devontre Cantrell. We are fifth. Yeah, let's do that. And then looking at the center position, we do have somebody in Lyle Swope that we are number one on, and we're number two for Leon Livings. I feel like it would be a disservice for us to not, oh, wait a minute, we're actually second here for Amari Volk. I think we have to take a stab at him for sure. Minnesota is, is in lead though. They're gonna ho own us big time on the pipeline though. I'm gonna add him, but I'm not, I'm not very confident in that. Um, you have this guy here who has us fifth and somehow my pipeline is a number one even though my pipeline is indiana not sure how that works but okay then i think just to be on the safe side we are going to target leon livings since we have a, a three rated pipeline and we're number two right now all right so now on to the defensive side of the ball and this is where i'm i think we need to really stick a lot of attention into for the off season here because Ivan Davis, who we know can be a very good playmaker for us, he's a senior. We do have Cam Crowell as a sophomore, and I want to get him on the field this year because I don't want him to leave. We're right in line with his playing style, but that can change after the season if you know things don't go our way. At right end, we have Kevin Session, who is a junior, and we have a senior behind him. So we're gonna need some depth at the defensive end position. And then at D-Tackle, we have a lot of seniors. Devontae O'Malley, Damon Taylor Jr., and Cade Haberman are all seniors, which is going to leave just Skylar Gill Howard as our lone defensive tackle that could stay after this season. So we're going to need a lot of depth here. We do have Mark Hensley, but we don't know if he's going to develop yet. He could. We don't know. So defensive line is going to be a big E area for me for defensive ends and of course defensive tackles. We do run a 4-2-5, which if you don't know what that is, is essentially it is a nickel package out of a 4-3 front. So you have four down linemen, two D tackles, two defensive ends, and you have two linebackers. So which means that in turn, linebacker isn't as important to us to get another one. Since we do have Christian Furman and Jake Gassaway, I'm leaning on Gassaway to be like the leader of this defense after this season. Um, Furman is a senior. He's not going to be here long. And then we have Jaden Dolphin, who we saw make a ton of plays for us in the last game as well. We know he's going to be good, but he's also a senior. And the entire outside linebacker core is a senior on this side. So we are definitely going to need a lot of outside linebackers. And we're going to need at least one more inside linebacker. But the problem is a lot of the outside backers are going to be, of course, your edge rushers because even CFB doesn't dictate between the two. So we have to try and find guys that are pass coverage guys first or at least run stoppers and not, you know, speed rushers or power rushers. So then looking at the defensive line, we have a couple of people that have us at the top three. So I'm going to go ahead and add them to the board right away. Uh, we have 
Barry Duarte, who is a run stopper. We have Marcus Dobbs, who is a power rusher. And then we have Marshall Crook, who is a speed rusher. So all three of these guys, I can make work on its defensive line. I don't have a worry about that. Um, and then on the D tackle side, we have a couple, but we're not any on anybody's list. We're top eight at best with TJ Derelick here. We have to add them though, because we're going to need guys. You know, like we can't go without defensive tackles. So I'm going to add those two to the list. I do plan on looking through this list after we get through the initial run to see if there's anybody that I can jump in on that hasn't really had much action towards them quite yet. But outside linebackers is another big area as well. Luckily for us, Dennis Rawls has us as third. We're going to add him. Uh, this is a power rusher, so I'm not too concerned with him. Manual president. Um, we have he has us as first, but he's a power rusher. He is a bit smaller. Uh, I'm going to add him to the list. Then at middle linebacker, we don't have a whole lot of options. Connor Sams does have us as fourth, so we're going to add him to our list as well. I would love to get a guy like Kiki Odenabo, but he... I mean, he doesn't even have us on his list. I feel like I should try anyway. I, I do. Yeah, let's let's try for Odenabo here. I have to really find though. I have to go back to outside linebackers because we really have to find a pass rush, a pass coverage guy. Okay, here's one. Um, Earl Morey. We're gonna add him. Then I think for now we'll hold off. And then looking at our cornerback room, Javon Bird is the leader of this team at this point. He's the fan favorite. He's one of the best players we have on defense, if not the best, but he is a senior. So is J Jashan Prophet. We do have Jacob Finley, who I'm really excited to see play a little bit more, but we don't have a lot of options behind him. Okay, so these two are gonna be gone. Cameron Dabney is gonna be gone. Ty Miles is a junior. Um, and we have a few guys like um, Amarian, Knight Amarian Knighton, who I think he could be something too. He's a 70 overall, six foot. Um, we have Malik Armstrong, Andre Cobb, and Deshaun Gibson. So we do have some players. It's just that we don't know if these guys are going to develop well or not, right? We just, we don't know. And then moving over to the safeties, Nate Valkersell. He is one of the best players we have as well. He's a senior though. We do have Trey Porter behind him. I'm excited to see what he can do. He's a sophomore, so we have some time with him if, if he'll stay. And then we have Muhammad Jamey, who I am just going to start. I, I know that we have Jordan Hansen, but Jamey is one overall better. I, for some reason, he was one overall worse on the different roster. I, I'm assuming they made a, an update to the roster, and I just wasn't aware of it. But Jamey is going to be the starter here, and we'll have him at least for the next season or two. So... Safety isn't a huge concern for me, but if we can find a guy that makes sense, we're gonna definitely gonna add him to the... All right, so then looking at the prospect list here, we do have a couple of guys who at least have us in the top eight, Joseph Tony and Diego Napolitano. Napolitano. Diego Napolitano, okay, that's a name. Uh, Denario Neighbors. Uh, there's a lot of guys that have so much like interest in other schools that it's going to be hard for us to push through on this. We might have to come back to this one as well, but we'll just stick with these two for now. And then moving on to the safety position, we have Matthew Tabber who has us as sixth, but Mitch Asher has us at ninth. We do have three pipeline on him. He's from Illinois, which could come in handy. Let's try and see if we can bring in ourselves a three-star safety. And there's not a whole lot of stuff available in the secondary for us, but we do. Okay, Pat Obi, look at that. Strong safety, 5'11", 215. We're in first right now for him. We're definitely adding him to the board. And then let's see. Ryan McClellan has us as fifth. And that's about it. Yeah, we're not. We're sixth on this list. Um, Screw it. Let's go all in. I'm sure we can come back and get a punter at some other point. I mean, it's not like it's pressing to take one right now. And now we do have one more spot available. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to any, and I'm gonna go to four star. And I just wanna see if there's anybody that we're not locked out from that we could really use. Like somebody like Ty Middlebrooks here, but he's got a lot of interest in other schools. I'm just looking for that bar to be a little bit lower so where it's easier for us to get into play with them. 
right? We don't necessarily have to be on their list, but if if they're if they don't have a ton of immediate interest in other schools and I can try and force myself in with a scholarship offer, I definitely want to give that a whirl. But try and try and bring some more talent to this team. Deshaun Sumner, wide receiver, 6'3. Uh-oh, guys. Yep, he's be the one. Gotta do it. All right, so I now have the 35 put down here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by giving a scholarship to everybody on this list. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. And then whatever's left over, we're going to use it to scout a few players out because we are a one and a half star school, one star technically, right? Any player that we can get here that is anything between a two and a four star is going to be a plus for us in the long run. We are trying to build this school up. We have to take what we can get right now. We can't be too picky. So I'm going to go through this whole list and I'm going to offer everybody a scholarship. And then we'll, I'll see you guys after that. And then we'll go through and maybe do a little bit of, we'll go back through and do a little bit of scouting after that to see if we can learn a little bit more about these. All right. So I went ahead, got everybody offered a scholarship. Now, the reason I'm doing that, I have been doing a little bit of studying in between the last episode and this episode. I've been watching a few people on what they're doing. Um, you know, like I said, I'm not I'm not a professional at any of this stuff, okay? I'm still learning this game just as much as anybody else, which is why I haven't really done a lot of tip videos for this one, because I don't want to try and pretend that I know what I'm talking about, right? When I don't. Not yet, anyway. Um, and I've been watching a few different videos of, like, Fendler. Um, there's one guy. I got to look him up. I, I have to look him up because, let me tell you, this guy is putting in some serious work. I've been watching this guy right here. On some of his videos about recruiting and stuff he's putting in some serious work max plays cfb um i am for sure that those that his subscribers are going to go up if he keeps doing what he's doing he's been i watched like two of his videos all the way through and it it gave me a little bit more of insight of what i should be doing and what i should be looking for and what i can avoid and it's been a big help for me and i wanted to share that with you guys if you guys haven't found his channel yet or have not heard of him yet i would definitely go and check him out because He's got some really, really good videos about recruiting and just the, the actual data, like the science behind it, not not the feeling, like how the system works. And he's sort of starting to figure that out. He's he's sharing with everybody. So shout out to Max Play CFB. He's been doing a lot of good work. And um, I definitely use him to, to learn a little bit more about it myself here since this is new territory for me. But now back to our list, we do have, you know, 35 of our 35 all filled out. Now we're going to go through and I want to see if I can learn a little bit about some of these players. Now we have 325 hours left, so we have quite a bit. And then we're going to start with the Marshall Crook here. That is the speed rusher. Um, okay. So hundred percent, not the best, but of course he's a two star. You got to expect that. I want to use the points on these guys first because uh, because I have the ability to get a little bit more back when scouting them. Like I have, I get more for my for my scouting, so I think it's the best to get them out of the way. Okay, so so far no busts, which is good. Let's go to these guys. T TJ Derelick. He's got DL Rally. Oh, and he's a bust. But you know what? We're a one star. We, we can't really, we can't play favorites here, okay? He's got two mentals, DL Rally and team player. Um, we're, we're, we're keeping him on the board here. We're not gonna jump the gun and get rid of him. And we have another bust. Well, hey, it is what it is. Tough sledding for us here, but you know, it is what it is. He's also fan favorite and we just need bodies, really. That's really what we need. We need bodies for this team as we grow and, and establish this thing. Um, now let's try and push for, where were we with this guy? I think we were fifth with him, second with Amari Volk. So we're going to do the scouting on Volk. Oh, wow. Look at those abilities. Strong grip, ground and pound, three mentals, fan favorite road dog, OL rally. He's somebody we're definitely going to have to keep an eye on here. We're in second place right now behind Minnesota. Of course, they're going to have the the tier on us. So if they show influence, we're probably losing this. And then I do want to make sure I get a couple of other positions here. So let's go, go wide receiver. And let's see what we can do with Willie Strange here. Huh? Willie Strange. Oh, he's going to be fast. 
Oh, there we go. Okay, so now we know we need to focus on Willie Strange. 92 speed, 84 excel, 80 spectacular catch, 88 jumping. That's somebody we need on this team. Willie Strange would be huge for us. We gotta we gotta pound the table for him. And then let's make sure we get a running back involved here. I really want to look at Mike Hurt. Because he, for some reason, has us as number one. So we got to make sure we know everything about him. Okay, he's going to be loaded up. Look at that. 92 speed, 90 agility, 84 juke move, 80 ball carrier vision, recoup ability, and road dog for the mental ability. That's a big find. I, we definitely got to keep him on the board here. And then I do want to make sure we're bringing in another big running back. I like having a power back on the roster. I think we got to try and go for Romeo Raymer. Considering we have the three pipeline, we are tied with another school with the three tier, but that's okay. We're going to re recruit him anyway. Okay. Road dog. Perfect. Um, yeah, that's actually pretty good. 88 speed, 89 acceleration for a power back. I'll take that any day. And we have Earl Mori here. Linebacker. We know linebacker is going to be a big target for us. So we got to see if what this guy's... Winning time. Okay, this guy is going to have some good stuff to him. Ooh, okay. So he is a bust, but that's okay. Okay, he's a three-star. We need linebackers. We're not going to we're not going to let that sway us. And that is going to be pretty much it. We've already offered all of the hours we can for scholarships, but that is a decent first round here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and simulate to week 1 so we can see what type of influence we were able to get on these players and see if you know if we have a chance with any of these like three and four stars that we're trying to squeeze our way into for interest all right so right off the bat we're gonna go and look at the position by position breakdown Braden callaway we are now in the lead for we are the only ones who showed influence in him or showed interest Clayton garfield on the other hand has a lot of interest right away i'm wondering if that means he is like a I'm wondering if that means he's really good. Yeah, I bet that means he's a gem. No, he's not. Okay, interesting. So Romeo Raymer, we were the only one who showed interest in him. So right now we are in the lead. Same with Emmanuel Williams and Mike Hurts, but there are plenty of teams behind us that are not too far off. So we're gonna have to make sure I'm not even going to waste time. This is a four star. We don't have like any other four stars on our board. We're just going to go right into it. And we're just going to, we're just going to send the house on him. We know we have some stuff that works with him. We have two A's for playing time and proximity to home. So I'm just, I'm not wasting any time. We're going to go straight up to the maxed out 50. We do have some competition right away for Mike Hull. Um, I mean, I sort of expected that. We weren't going to be the only ones showing interest in all of these players. Um, but we'll come back to that. We're still in the lead for Stoke. Willie Strange is where I'm really, really, I'm keying in on. We're going to go ahead and we're going to do another full house for him. Send the send the house. Right now, we're the only one showing influence. We are having a lot of competition for George Salter here. We did move up to number one, though. So right now, our influence is best. So, But the thing is... He actually is getting like a lot of, is that Bowling Green down there? Yeah. They actually, they're like right on par with us for how much influence they're having. But we do have the leg up on them with the, the pipeline. So I think that we can hold both of these schools off if we want George Salter here because of our pipeline. And we're already in the lead. So I'm not too concerned with that. I do think, however, we're going to add something to him. We're just going to come back to that later. I want to see what the rest of these guys are looking like. Um, the Wow, look at that. Our, our offer for a scholarship did not even get us in the top 10. So I think what we're going to do is we're just going to... We're just going to go in here and we're just going to... We're just going to take the L on Deshaun Summer here. I'd like to bring him in, but he's a two-star. Our scholarship offer didn't even make us a top 10 team when all of these teams didn't even show interest in him or offer him anything. So we're just gonna take the take the L on here. We're gonna remove him from the board. All right, now to the tight ends. Oh, look at that. Ezekiel Rashid really, really likes us. That's good. That is good. 
he took over as the number one um we're just gonna leave that ride out for now same with Poon here i'm not gonna push too much at him um at okay our tackles we have some competition for Kali, but we're we're in a good standing right now with Shoti. Shot? Shot? I can't say his name. Sorry. Maryland likes us. Ooh, okay. We got some competition for Truman. We need linemen though. Like, so we have to make sure. Okay, we're out gaining. We're out gaining ball state for sure. That's big. So let's that's our we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna throw on a Yeah, we'll do DM the family or DM player or whatever. And then we're going to do the same here for Truman. DM. I'll come back if we have extra points and I'll, I'll adjust things. I'm just sort of trying to figure out what our best motives are here. So right away. Okay. I think we're out. I, I knew this was going to happen. I was sort of hoping that Minnesota wouldn't show interest, but they offered him immediately, which is not surprising. He's a four star. Um, we are already out dueled. They are out gained us. Well, they we had about the same influence, but they have a pipeline on us by two. I'm not even gonna waste our time with this. We're just gonna take a, a, take him away. It sucks, but you know, it is what it is. Um, we are in number two for Truman. Oh wow, yeah, we are in some dire straits here for him. Um, I think we're gonna have to take the L on Truman as well. And then here for Leon Livings, we are in the lead and we have the best for pipeline for the teams that have done any any type of recruiting on him. So we are good there. We outgained, uh, is that Maryland? Yeah, it's Maryland. So I think we're gonna do a DM the player here for him. See what that does. Okay, we are getting destroyed on the defensive end front here, but we do have a pipeline. Uh, Maryland, and then who is that? Is that like Central Michigan or something, I think? They came in, they all offered, and they had a lot of influence, but we do have a pipeline. I'm wondering why we're getting outgained so much from them. Um, me, us and Ball State are doing the exact same thing, but again, we have a better pipeline, so I'm just, I'm wondering if that's going to take effect anytime soon. Um, we're going to do... Do... DM player. Like I said, I will come back and I will like change this if I want to do like contact friends and family for anybody else. But just for now, I want to see if we even stand a chance in these races. And yeah, I know I'm looking at, I'm like battling for two stars, but like, I don't know. I mean, maybe I can find somebody else later on that doesn't have anything and we can adjust our, our plans accordingly. We are in the running for Derelict. I'm going to have to add something to him. Or where were we at with Sneed? Okay, so we are going to be in a serious fight here. Trying to decide if it's even worthwhile. Considering we are barely in third place with a three-tier pipeline. And we did outgain Maryland, right? We, we got closer to Maryland, but... I don't know if we're gonna be able to to outgain Snee. We're gonna stay in this race though for sure right now. I think we gotta do contact friends and family. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is one of our biggest areas of needs right now is D tackle. We have to make sure that we're we're doing what we need to do. Okay, so linebackers, Dennis Rawls. We were the only one to offer him, but we do have a leg up in that right now. We're gonna leave that alone. Same with manual president. Um Four schools offered. Ball State is coming up to play. Bowling Green is in there. Central Michigan. Maryland is has not shown any interest, so they dropped down the list. And then Earl Morey. Okay. So we offered him a contract, and that did not even get us whiffing the top eight. That's crazy. So I really thought we'd at least get something on him, you know? Like, how do we not make top eight? Dang, but it, it, it's whatever. I mean, there's a few pipeline schools that are that are going after him. You know, obviously he lives in Florida. He's not going to want to come all the way up to Illinois unless he has to. It was just a shot in the dark, but we will take the L on him as well. And then moving over to the linebackers. This was one that I'm really surprised that we didn't have any movement on. 
we have a, a pipeline here where uh we are literally in his town like DeKalb, illinois is literally 40 minutes west of chicago like this guy doesn't just does not want to play here apparently because they offered him a scholarship the same as we did and we didn't even crack top eight we're not like we're still like halfway look at the little amount that we had influence on i think this is another one we're just gonna have to fortunately take the l on that sucks um we are in the running for connor sams um we did not ball state's got a big lead on us though and this is the thing that i was learning from uh max plays cfb like he was like he essentially explains it perfectly like you have to look at the darker bar where your influence is so like your 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 normal color bar is your interest the the darker is what influence you had by your actions and are is your darker color bigger area of increase than the other teams and what's your pipeline at and if you're out pipelined if you don't if you're like dead even in in influence it can be harder for you to even get those players and then you have to decide is it worthwhile to do this kind of stuff if you're not going after top tier talent and that's why i'm removing some of these guys from the board because there's a ton of one two three star players out there i can probably find somebody later that will come to this school that i don't have to spend a bunch of time on right now just to lose to another school right so that's why i'm doing this th this way see now here for joseph tony we have jumped up to number one we are the only school that offered him He's a three star. We need corners. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to do, um, I'm going to do send the house for him. Yeah. I think it's, I think we need to try and get a corner. We don't have anybody. Um, uh, and then for this same with Napolitano, Napolitano. Yeah. So I'm not going to do a full 50 on him because he's 5'11". I know I'm weird with height, but it's just the way I am guys. I can't change it and that is that and then our safety we're getting out dueled right now by other schools but we have the pipeline so i don't want to i don't want to like not go after him um i'm just gonna do i'm gonna see if we can do anything here to to make a dent we're just gonna go dm the player here and see what happens with that and then pat obi we had here as this and we are the only one who showed interest. So we are going to go ahead here and we're going to do DM the player for him as well. And our punter. We're the only one who offered. So do DM the player here for him. That leaves us with 80 hours for the week. Or we should offer him something for recruiting because we want to make sure that he's he wants to come here. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do DM the player for now. The thing is, our, a lot of our grades are bad for him. Like, nothing is, is a B even. So, he's from New Jersey. It's going to be tough for us to sell, but we are in first right now for him. Whereas with Garfield, we are moving up the list, but there's other schools that are in play just as much as us, like Bowling Green, for instance. And we're getting outplayed by Buffalo with the pipeline. So, might be a little tough for us to, to land these guys. Yeah, you know what? Let's let's go ahead and let's add do contact friends and family. We'll DM the we'll DM these two guys because there isn't a lot of action on them right now. And then that leaves us 40 points for other for a, another player or two. We already went full ham with Willie Strange. Um, George Salter, we are in the lead for. But Bowling Green is closing in on us fast. I want to do at least one scouting with him. 89. Okay. Okay. Not bad. I say let's go ahead and let's do DM the player. And then we didn't do much for recruiting on these guys. We have a ton of pull on Rashid right now and Coom, but they're one stars. I mean, that's pretty, that's nothing to, to be too excited about. I feel like we should do something with Bryce Colley here for sure. So we're going to go in here and actually, you know what? Let's look at the guards again. Okay. We do have some stuff out here on guards. I feel like we should maybe, I could swap this out for 
contact friends and family. I'm not going to touch Cantrell too much. We're out gaining bowling or ball state quite a bit and we have the pipeline so i'm not too concerned with that but truman i i mean we i sh we should beat out central michigan but i just i don't want to take too much of a chance on it maybe we just let it ride for this week and see what happens livings we did 10 on so i went through the list and i found a couple more players that i wanted to look at siegler here is probably the most prominent one I'm going to go and put all 15 points on him right away. We're going to offer a scholarship and then we're going to see if I can get back in the mix here with these guys by just doing a DM the player on him um, and social media and just see what happens because we, if we, if this guy's a four star, we are actually a three tier pipeline for him. Like the only thing that we are have going for us is that his deal breaker right now is is, pro is proximity to home like that is what could potentially get us in this race Our, we're out pipelined by michigan and iowa and we're on par with illinois and who else is that i can't even make out the logo but regardless we do have the the home run with proximity to home if he cares that much about it we might be able to swing this guy so i'm gonna put the rest of the hours into him and see if it can pay off all right, so we have 55 hours this week. Now it's time for us to see what we have for progress on any of these players. So Galloway, we are still the only one putting in any work on, so we are gonna go there. Williams, we are we are like guaranteed top eight. We are in the running big time for him. We are running away with Mike Hurt. If we can get Mike Hurt, that would be huge for this offense. Absolutely huge. And we also are in the running for Raymer. So we might have to make a choice at some point between these two, or maybe some other team will come along and snag one of them. But for now, we're in the running for both of them. Uh, Stoke, we're still in the lead for wide receivers. This was the one where I wanted to see what we could do for Strange. And right now we're still the only one seriously pursuing him, which is big. That's huge. So we are gonna, we are gonna just keep pounding the table with him, leave that, send the house on with him. Um, we did not get anywhere with Brett Whitehurst, who was somebody I added. Let me go ahead and add him as a scholarship to see if that makes any noise with him. Because right now, Akron is the only team offering him anything, but we are his his pipeline here. We are his area. So we're going to we're gonna offer him that contract or offer him the scholarship and see if that helps sway anything. And George Salter, we're actually in the lead for now, which is, which is good. We are really pulling on Maryland and Bowling Green. Uh, tight ends were still good there, good there. And I did see Adrian Doss and I wanted to scout him. Nobody has done it yet. So we are just going to throw a little bit of a, a a cookie out there as a scholarship and see if any if he takes this, the bite. If not, it is what it is. We are good for Shoddy and we are holding strong now on Kali. We do have a little bit more influence than the other teams. Um, we are getting outbidded by Central Michigan on Truman. They must have went hardcore with him. So we're going to go in here. And we are going to move this. We're going to go contact friends and family free. Redman is somebody that I just added. So we're going to make sure we get a scholarship out to him to see if that moves the needle at all. Then here, what about livings? Livings we're still really good on. So we're going to leave that alone. Defensive ends. Central Michigan is going hard for like all of these players, like super hard. Ball State now even as well. We're good on Barry Duarte, so I mean we do have that going for us. Let me go in here and let's let's remove DM player from him, and then let's do a 25. We might end up losing out on another player yet too, so we don't know. Let's let's see what the rest of things are looking like. Okay, so we actually had a huge pull on Taj Sneed. That's big. And on TJ Derelict. But we got to keep the 25s there. Um, we're still good on Rawls. We are second with President. And then Siegler. We did jump into top eight. So we definitely have to keep the pedal to the metal with him. Anything, I'm going to have to... Like, if we're going to bring him in, I have got to do something with him right now so we're gonna go we're gonna take away these two we're just gonna do a or we're gonna do contact friends and family 
I'd say let's try for adding this 10 points on Whitehurst here. We didn't do any recruiting with him yet. So let's do that. And there we go. I'm going to go ahead and set the schedule so that way our, our schedule falls the same way it did. We beat Midwest. We lose to Notre Dame. Um, and then we'll, you know, of course, pick things up with the recruiting after I get that stuff done. So, so we're going to go over to the coach's abilities. And we are going to do our second for defensive line, which will give us a better influence with our actions. And then we are going to do that for linebackers as well. We'll do advanced look and then most influential. And then we're going to do receivers. And let's just take another quick look and see where we're at with our players. We only have 15 hours, so we really don't have a lot of, of hours to spend on anybody. Um, I should really use that to, to, to get three more players on here, but we really looked through the list. There wasn't a whole lot of players that was really that interested in them. Williams is now in his top eight. Raymer is still in top 10. We are in top five and we are leading by quite a bit for Mike Hurt. I think we're not gonna schedule a visit with Hurt because right now we're the only ones really in competition for him. So I'm gonna go for another week and see what happens with him. Um, I'm good with Mike Hall. He might be like, I don't think we even need to worry about him so much. He's gonna be on the board here for now, but if Hurt, if we continue to lead with Hurt, I mean, there's, there's no point. I mean, we could bring Hall in too, but if we can get hurt, we should be pretty good at running back. Wide receivers, we are still fighting a little bit with them, but we are killing it with Strange, and that's who I really, really want. So we're going to keep fighting that. We are not making much headway at all on Brett Whitehurst, so we're going to go ahead. We're going to take away this, and then we are just going to... We're just going to remove him from the board. He's not interested in us. That's fine. That does give us some more points for the week, which is good. Defensive ends. Holy crap. Okay. So Central Michigan is going hard at him. But that's okay because we did do that with... We went with Dobbs for a reason. Let's do this, okay? Let's go here. Let's take away his 10. And we're going to put a 25 on him. There we go. So we put 25 on Crook and Dobbs. I don't think we even really have to. Yeah, we're we're sort of good on Duarte. We don't have to do any. Um, D tackle, we're still leading and we're pulling on him. Um, we're still good on Sneed, so we're gonna keep that the way it is. Dennis Rawls, we are making progress on, so that's good. Okay, we are moving up. We are number six on Siegler. Um. The question is, can we even catch up to Illinois? I'm starting to doubt that we can. But since I did the linebacker more influence, I'm going to leave it for another week and see where we're at. I don't want to change what we're offering him right now. We're Now we're pulling. Okay, so now we're in a good spot with Asher. And we're in a good spot with Ovi. So we really... We're in a good spot with almost everybody. I'm wondering if we might be able to sneak in here. Well, no, we wouldn't be able to, I don't think. Well, let's just try it, right? Let's just give it a shot. I mean, we'll get our we'll get it back later on. So let's just go over here. We'll go to the linebacker. Let's offer him a a collar a scholarship. Because we are right there at number four, and we haven't even tried. So I'm just gonna put it in there and see what happens. Worst case scenario, we we get our scholarship back next week. Nelson Singleton is the other one. I'm gonna do a scholarship for him for the last five points, and that should put us. At zero, there we go, and we'll just see where the where the board falls. All right, look at that. So Kevin Session ended up being player of the week for us. Three sacks, six tackles, one tackle for loss. And that was in a, in a loss to Notre Dame, but hey, we'll take it, right? Okay, so we're good on, on Callaway. We haven't really moved much here on Garfield, but with Callaway in tow, I'm not too concerned with that. We only have 10 points. We're good on Williams. We're still good on Raymer. We're good on Hertz. Good there. We have a substantial lead on Salter. We're still good with Strange. We got to get him. I, I think we might have to schedule something with him. We'll hold off for now. Um, Kali, we're about to hit top eight with. Good with Shodi as well on his way to top five. Good with Truman. 
Maryland, Cantrell, we jumped like crazy with. Wow, I didn't even do anything. And we're good with Raymond and er, Redmond. And we're still good on Livings. And then we're making progress actually now on Crook. We jumped all the way up here to very close to first. And that's just by having the um just by having the extra boost now and moving it to 25. We're still good here. We're making we've jumped ball state about two weeks ago and now we're pulling on them, so that's good. Um we're still good on both of them. This is where it's going to be come down to it, though. Oh, wow. We jumped into first place on Singleton. That's big. Okay. That's that's really good. We are not... I don't think we're going to be able to catch these guys. I was... We did move up to five, though. So I think I'm just going to leave these points there. That's a four-star, too. Four-star run stopper. But I feel like I want to get points on Singleton here if we want to... If we want to try and sway him to come here now. All right, we have arrived in week four, and this is where we would have been if uh, the patch didn't happen and ruin the last one. But I'm actually happy because I did some tweaking to the uniforms, and I'm really, really happy with them. So let's go ahead here. We'll start with recruiting, and we'll see where things are at. We have five hours total. Wow, we are just killing it with hours. Um, we're still good on Callaway here. Um, we're still somehow sort of gaining better than one and two, but we haven't moved away from third yet. So that's a little strange to me. Looks like a team finally got in on the Emmanuel Williams and that's of course, central Michigan. We're still light years ahead with Raymer though. Nobody's even offered him a scholarship yet. Um, we are still good there. All right. And then we are still good on Truman, good on Maryland. We're good with Cantrell and Redmond. We are still good on livings. Uh, Crook, we are still, they are still gaining on us. We are still good on Sneed. Oh my God. All of a sudden, we are getting bombarded for Derelict here, which means we might have to end up switching up our stance here. We might have to do a hard sell on him, but we do know he is a bust. Both of these guys are, but I mean, we do need the guys regardless. Siegler, we, oh, look at that. We jumped up to number two now, and we actually are gaining on Illinois. We are gaining on Illinois. Not by much, but we are. Okay, so everybody else still looks pretty good. The only only one I'm worried about is Crook, but with him being a two-star, I really, I mean, we if we lose out on him, we lose out on him. I could take his 25 points back right now and disperse them out somewhere else. Even though we're a pipeline here, we're just not going as hard with him. Or maybe I'll just leave it for another week because nobody else is really in dire need of a um, of a huge push. We're still in the lead with Derelict. I would like to maybe go full house, but he's a bust. You know, that's why I don't want to send the house on him. All right, we are underway here in our opening game in the conference against Buffalo. And there you see, this is one of the jersey sets. I put together one that I found that was like a really sharp looking one they had a few years back. And I thought it looked really cool. So this is one of the options we have for the jersey combos. It looks pretty slick. And let's get started. We're going to start right away with a handoff to McElroy that goes nowhere. End up losing three yards on the play. Little play action, and Hampton hit as he throws. There's a flag down. And it's going to be holding. So right away, we are starting off with a very rough start to the game. On Champ, they, the right guard. Second and 23 now after the penalty. And we go underneath. He finds Barnes, and Barnes has it out to the 27. Make this third down a heck of a lot easier now for a conversion. Hampton back under pressure, and he's going to fumble it. No! And Buffalo picks it up and takes it in. That's not a good way to start this game. All right, well, let's try that again, shall we? Back on offense here after the big loss. With the fumble sack and the touchdown, we're going to hand it off to Brown. He goes right up the gut. 
plows over a defender on his way to 10 yards. A nice first carry for Antonio Brown. Hampton back, looks right side. He's got Barnes again, and he will get it out of bounds after a gain of eight. Good bounce back so far. Let's see if we can keep it up. A handoff, Brown, and somehow he gets out of there. How did he get away from that? That was a great play. Brown getting us the first down by just refusing to go down once again. And now it's a fake to McElroy and another handoff to Brown. Goes for a short gain of two. Here we go, Hampton looking deep left side. It's almost intercepted. So third and eight after the incompletion. Hampton under pressure again and he goes down. It's number 53. I don't know who 53 is, but he has been a force against us so far today. On comes this Buffalo offense for the first time today. Oh, wow. We got him all the way back to the 13. So a pretty good punt. Be a handoff. And nowhere to go. We shut it down. That was Jacob. I think that was Jake Hansen, the, the strong safety. Quick pass over the middle. It's completed. And it's to the tight end, it looks like. He's going to get all the way out to the 28. And there is a big lane for the running back. And he's going to get another eight yards for this offense. Buffalo on the move early. Oh, and there's a flag. Is it going to be against us? It's got to be on the offense, right? There it is. False start. Yeah, give them some penalties and some negative plays here. And off the 20 again, and he's got a wide open lane. 40, 30, 25, and finally knocked out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Buffalo is just kicking our butts right now. Come on, guys. Play action underneath, and it's a short completion for three. And there's another false start, it looks like. Yes, it is. Okay, at least we got that going for us, right? Second and 12 now. The only good plays that th we've had was the ones the refs gave us. That's not a good look. And going for the quick little screen or the outlet pass there, and there, there's nothing there. Nice stop up front by the defense. Now third and 10, we got a shot. Can we get the stop? Play action, under pressure, we get a sack of our own. Big time play, and it's Session, last week's player of the week, getting back there for the sack, and we will at least force a field goal. All right, so defense did its job. They stepped up after giving up a couple of big plays. Now we need this offense to find something here. Play action. Hampton rolling out. He's firing it deep, and it's incomplete. He was looking for McElroy, but he could not connect. That would have been a tremendous play had we been able to come up with it there. Brown in motion. And Hampton holds on to it too long. And he ends up getting sacked, and it's going to be a loss of seven. He has taken three sacks already today. Hampton back. Still, you gotta throw the ball, man! And that's the end of another drive. So, we end up getting a stop on the last drive. Defense did its job. A very quick three and out. Now we are back here on offense from the 27. Hampton fakes it. Rolling out. Going right side, it's incomplete again. We have not had a completion downfield at all today. The only thing we've been able to get is short completions. we got to find a way to start connecting on those. As Brown gets stood up, flip sides of the field here for the quarter break. And it is third and ten. We need the third, yeah, the 37. Looking over the middle, finally able to connect. 
and it is Kenji Lewis, the one with the play. Finally, Hampton able to connect with something downfield, and we move the ball. Well, let's keep this going, guys. And we're gonna give it to McElroy. He gets a quick lane, and no, that was actually Kyle Thomas coming in. Thomas on the end around gets the eight yards. Second and two. Now it's McElroy in motion. He takes it this time, and there was nothing available. Buffalo read it beautifully. Basil, the, the 53, the guy that's been killing us all game was the one in on the stop. Now on third and two, we're gonna give it to Brown, and of course, he is gonna push his way forward for that first. You can always count on Brown, just like UPS. Another handoff, and Brown somehow finds his way for four. There was initial contact at the line of scrimmage, but he found his way through it. And now we're gonna go to this little half full house pistol look. Lewis in motion, it's a handoff to Brown. Buffalo converges quickly, shuts it down after a few. Another third down for this offense. Hampton back, gotta get rid of it Hampton. And he barely gets rid of it, and it will be enough for us to at least, it's, never mind, we're not gonna try a field goal. We're not gonna kick a field goal from the 34? Okay, we're not. And I guess we're just gonna pin him at the 17. I'm not sure why we... Do we not kick field goals from the 34 in college? I'm pretty sure we do. There's a handoff to 32. First time we're seeing him, and of course he breaks free! Where's the defense, guys? Holy crap, he just took off for 50 yards! Oh my gosh, we are getting our butts whooped right now. Another handoff. He cuts it back, and that time we're at least there after a few. But this defense has had a hard time containing the run today. You're going to go to it again? No, it's a fake. A beautiful fake at that. It ends up being an, a run, a read pass, or a RPO. And he ends up sending it over the middle for a very nice throw to his receiver who is running through the seam. This time it is a handoff to 20. And he will get it for three. Still not sure if this defense is going to be able to contain these guys today because we have not done a good job so far as they close in on another touchdown. First time, though, the offense will be getting in the end zone. Hopefully, this defense can come up with a play. And, no, oh, man, I thought there might be a chance we jump that. But we'll have to settle for giving up three more points. And it's up. And it is good. 13-0 Buffalo. Down by pretty much two touchdowns. And we come out flat-footed again. Second and 13. I was thinking of putting a visit down for this week. Thank God I didn't. As Barnes, no, that's Applegate, takes it for four. Come on, offense. Hampton gonna take another sack. I'm about to take this guy out if he can't throw the ball, guys. I really am. I think we're going to have to put Macon in next time and see if he can do anything different because this guy is just holding on to the ball and taking sack after sack. And last week, at least, Macon has the ability to take off and run with it. Buffalo comes out with all the momentum in the world, handed off to 20, and of course, there is nobody there for the defense. Not a soul. Not a soul on the outside to even attempt to stop the run. I don't know where the pursuit angles are, have gone from this defense, but we are getting our butts whooped right now. So I hand it off again. And that time will stop it. We have given up three, at least 40 plus yard runs today. That is, that is unacceptable by a long shot. Pushed out. 
And gain a three once again. Third and four. Empty backfield, looking end zone, it's completed. Make it 20 to nothing as Morrow takes it in for Buffalo. This is gonna be Hampton's last shot, honest to God. If he can't get something going here with this offense, we're gonna to have to put in Luther making and just see what we got because this is just not working right now. I know he had the good game against FCS Midwest in our first episode, but that was a different file. It was a different everything. There's McElroy finally making a catch and making a big play. So I just had a glitch happen. I don't know if you guys have ever had this where they all hurried up to the line and then did nothing but let the clock run out and then took a delay of game. And then took a sack. You've got to be kidding me right now. And another one. We can't protect somebody here for nothing. All right, Hampton. Let's see what you got. And it is completed. We're going to call our second timeout. But uh, we need a big play here and then a quick timeout so we can try and get some points on the board heading into the break. Come on, Hampton. I almost throws an interception. That is not good. All right, well, we got another chance here. 15 seconds, plenty of time for another play and a timeout. And now he does throw an interception. All right. Well, that's good. And yes, I went ahead and I put Jalen Macon in. We need to see if there's something that can give this offense a boost. Macon comes in, fires it left side. It's caught by Lewis, who almost breaks free. But he was unable to keep his balance along the sidelines. He's forced out at the 43. We just got to see if Macon can give us the boost we need. Because right now, Hampton has not been able to find anything. I'm not blaming it all on him by any means. As Brown, unable to make a play, he'll lose a yard. And the worst part is our best player, Ontario Brown, is pretty much ineffective right now because we have to we have to throw the ball. Oh, or we can do that, throw it to him, and he'll get a yard or two back. <laughs> Didn't really make much difference. Third and ten. Come on, Macon, find something for us. Oh, he does! It's Lewis! And he's gone! Touchdown! Kenji Lewis beats his man in the press and takes it the distance for the touchdown. Wow. Every time Jalen Macon gets put into this game, we saw it last episode. Things just happen. Now, will they continue to happen? I don't know. But that's the best thing we've seen all day. So we're just gonna ride the wave right now and see what happens the rest of the game. Let's see if he can continue this streak here for the offense. Play action rollout, making firing deep over the middle and it's incomplete. He was looking for McElroy downfield, but he was double covered. Gave him a shot, just couldn't connect. And off to Brown. He gets outside, and he's close to a first. We third and one after that quick run to the outside. Come on now, offense. Let's get this. Let's get this conversion here. And off. Brown gets shut down. We gotta go for it, right? We have what? You've gotta be kidding me. Oh, I thought we were gonna go for that. It's fourth and two, we're down by 19. I just feel like that's the spot where we have to go for it. Hand off and nothing there. I mean, that's our opportunity right there. I feel like I'll take Brown up the middle two out of three times to, to get positive yards, you know? And there's 20 again, that time we shut it down. Come on, defense. Get us another stop so we can get one more shot on offense. Come on now. Play action. Almost picked off. But it's batted down. And we'll get the stop we needed. Fourth down. Punt is coming. 
Williams takes it in, and he'll get us across midfield down to the 48 for Macon to come on out here and try and get this offense rolling here. Come on now. 107 to go in the third. And off to Brown. He gets outside, gets a block, and he's in the open. Down to the 34. They'll mark him at the 33. An excellent run. Great blocking on the outside. The line really got out there and set the edge well. Play action. Making going for it all to the end zone. It's batted down. Kenji Lewis once again the intended target. He has aired that one out a little too much. Didn't give him much of a chance to bring it down. Making again underneath the McElroy, and he's got it down to the 17. Nice completion, nice route. We're gonna go hurry up here. Oh, they have nobody up, up top there. Let's see if we can get McElroy up to the corner or something like that, right? Come on, Macon. Oh, he goes McElroy outside, but it's just a short route, and that is gonna end the third quarter. 26-7, but we are moving. Hand off to Brown. He gets up the middle, pushing forward down to the seven. We'll mark him at the eight. Just shy of a first, third and one. Takes a snap. Macon looking short. Got him. It's Apple getting easy first down. Another hand off to Brown. And oh, I thought he was going to get in. But he gets shut down at the one. Second and goal here. Barnes in motion. Hand off Brown, and there is no blocking. They knew exactly where we were going, and they had everybody there. We got to throw it here. Come on. Do not run this ball. Oh, we're going to run it again. Yeah, and it goes nowhere. Exactly what I thought was going to happen. And we're going to settle for three. Come on, guys. It is the fourth quarter. you got to go for that. Not a fan of that play calling there. That goal line package there was not good at all. You don't run it out of shotgun from the one yard line when everybody knows you're going to give it to Brown. Like, that was just a bad decision. And then to run the same play back to back, that was outrageous. Oh my, dude, we, dude, you have to catch that. You have to catch that. This team, man. We're like right there for making plays. We really are. But we just cannot capitalize on the momentum that we build ourselves. And that should have been an interception right there. You have to catch that. Come on, get him. No! God dang it, guys. All right, a little end around. Nothing there. We shut it down. Flag on the play as well. And that's going to be on the offense holding. That's going to push it back to first and 19. As they just continue to run this clock down. We had an opportunity, I felt like, there on the last drive. Oh, 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 I thought there was hopefully somebody would be in the area, but nobody there. It just hits the turf. But, I mean, going back on the few drives we had, last drive, complete L for not going for the touchdown. Uh, a couple drives. There we go. Big sack. It's Davis. Gets back there, makes the play. Third and 31. But we, we missed a chance to go for it on fourth down. We were around the midfield marker to try to extend the drive. There could have been points there. We should have had points, more points in the last drive. And we get another one from Davis. Big time play! I just wish he was a, like a sophomore or something so we had him for longer than just this season. Making back, looking short, completed. And it is Applegate again. Gets it for nine yards. Hand off to Brown. This line has had a tough day today. This Buffalo D line came with homework in mind and they did the studying. They had everything mapped out and they have shut down Ontario Brown pretty, pretty easily. 
Nice catch there for McElroy. It's unfortunate because I wanted Brown to be like the focal point of the offense, but it sucks because everybody knows that, you know? They know he's going to have to be the guy. And if they can shut that down, they, they have a much better option of trying to figure out what quarterback, what the quarterback is going to do. Second and five. Bacon back. Rolling out of the pocket. Let's it fly over the middle and trying to put it in the in a very tight window. And he almost made it work. But it ends up hitting the turf. Third and five. Brown in motion. Throw it. Throw it. Oh my god, this play. I hate that play. Now, now we want to go for it on fourth and five. See, this is what I don't understand. We should have done this last drive. And Macon gets it. Good catch on the sidelines to keep the drive a lot. They said we didn't get it? Are you kidding me? Did he not catch that? Am I crazy? I wonder if I'm going to see that replay later. Wait. My scoreboard just went away. There it is. Come back. Thank you. There's a two-minute warning. And that's pretty much it, folks. We don't have a chance to come back in this one. And there goes 20 again from their 10 yards. And yeah, that's it, folks, right there. That's all she wrote. Buffalo's going to come in to our stadium and send us home looking like fools. That's crazy. I really thought that we would be able to protect home turf this season, at least, at the very least. But we couldn't even do that, and we're going to go into conference week one and take an L. And yep, another big run. So that ended up being a very tough, tough loss. Um, I think what we're going to do for the this last part here is we're going to go ahead and we're at least going to get the simming done until next week so we can see where the recruiting is sitting and then we'll go ahead and end things there. After that horrible loss, we now have a risk of transfer on a few players because of how we're playing. Well, when you guys all suck, you know, what do you expect of us? And we went down in championship contender, which is not good. Man, that is rough. We had a rough week. We really did. Uh, recruiting update. We are first for all of these guys, which is huge. And we're going to be going on the road to take on NC State next video. We literally have no scouting points. Well, let's see if anything happened this week. Not a whole lot of change there. We're still leading by a mar wide margin. No movement here. Oh, we are we are about to get Mike Hurt to commit. I'm telling you guys right now. Yeah. Do we know enough about him to be able to do a hard sell? Oh, playing style is an F. Okay. Luckily, his deal breaker is proximity to home, so... We're just going to leave that alone. We are sold on a manual. We're still in the running in Raymer. We're still good on Stoke. Salter, we're really good on. Strange, we're almost to top three. I'm hoping that once we get to top three, we can just get this guy to commit right away. That will be a huge boost for our offense. We're good with Kuhn and Rashid. Um, we're good there. Playing style, we're still in F there. We have to have a big week. If we don't have a big game for playing style, like get the ground moving, we're going to be in trouble. But we are still good with Kali, so that's good. Um, Truman, we're still leading. Okay, Maryland is by far, I mean, he's just ready to come here. Antrell, we are now in second place because Ball State all of a sudden decided they wanted him. What in the world is happening here? We're good on livings. We are still in. We're we're gaining once again on central now that we have the 25 in there. And we are in first place on Dobbs still, but for some reason, Ball State is still just coming strong. Y'all just like not 
you know, can we do that? We're going to have to end up choosing one of these guys, I think, and trying to do a hard sell on them. Um, we're good on Sneed. We're good on Derelict. Rawls we're good on. President, we're still in third. Oh, my God. What in the hell did they do? I feel like we have to we have to do a do we even have enough to do a hard sell on them? No, we don't. Oh man, that sucks. I feel like we need to get some of this stuff back here. We haven't even moved the needle on Parker. We're by far good on Tony. Do I take the 50 away from him and put it to like 10? Well, he's so close to committing though. If I can put through like I don't know. I just wish I could get some of these guys to like make a decision. So I could use these points, man. We have no points. I can't take it off of Hurt. He's a four he's a four star. We have to get him to commit. Yeah, there really isn't a lot of guys that I can take points away from. I didn't even recruit this guy, so like it's not like I can get points back from him. And Truman we're fighting for, so I don't want to take the points away. We need some for Cantrell if we actually want to fight for him, but the question is, do we want to? Yeah, I think I think that is going to pretty much wrap it up. So next episode, guys, we have to take on NC State. We got to find a way to make this offense work. I'm thinking of putting Macon in as the starter. Um, I don't know, man. Outside of that one game with Hampton in a totally different file against FCS Midwest, we haven't seen him be able to perform at all. Whereas we have seen make and make plays. Now, last last game really wasn't all Hampton's fault. But there are times where he could have potentially gotten rid of that ball and he did, held on for too long. And make and made plays, right? Did we get a lot of points? No, but we were able to get points at least. And make and actually get first downs and move the ball where we weren't able to with Hampton. So I think what we're going to do is I'm going to give make it a shot to start NC State. And see what he's got. I think that's probably the best course of action for us. But as for this video, that is all I have for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you're excited this dynasty is back, make sure you hit that like button before you leave. Subscribe if you have not already. And turn on the bell notification. I will see you guys next time. Bye.